um, another common condition associated with the thyroid gland is what we call a thyroid goiter as I told you earlier goiter is nothing but a either a visible or a palpable palpable means where you can actually where the doctor can actually feel it with his or her hands while examining the, the patient or the person uh, is where uh, the um, gland gets enlarged and uh, whereby you know we can either actually see it as an enlarged gland or as I said the doctor can feel it with his or her fingers and this is a not a normal thing because usually as I told you earlier it's some the gland is not seen or felt so when you actually can do that there's something abnormal going on it is more commonly seen in women it's much more uh, commonly seen in women but uh, the thing is that not all glands or not all goiters are because that the thyroid gland is not functioning properly uh, in in a good percentage of people women especially they can have a, a goiter but their thyroid hormone levels are absolutely normal they don't require any form of treatment but it is certainly a cue see when a doctor examines or when a doctor is um, or when a per patient or a person is visiting the doctor and when the doctor examines the, pa the person and if the doctor comes across a gland uh, or a, a goiter the, go the doctor is inclined to ask for a thyroid function test um, now uh, it can happen that the thyroid function test can come back as normal but there is also a good chance that uh, the gland may not be functioning adequately or functioning poorly or not functioning at all so at that point we diagnose hypothyroidism that we discussed earlier and so you can ask me what do you uh, do in a gland that is enlarged but functioning normally then it depends on whether this person is particularly concerned about uh, the, the neck looking swollen or uh, you know people asking them uh, whether that they whether they've got their thyroids checked because you know they can see the uh, neck swollen uh, you know it becomes a cosmetic problem so if that's worrying them then what we uh, do is we, we we can actually try and put them on thyroxine uh, which may shrink the gland a little bit but nowadays we don't encourage that uh, mostly the only thing that we can do is to to surge, to operate the gland um, and uh, mind you it's purely for cosmetic reasons it's not because of any other reason um, but it's just that because people tend to get worried when everybody keeps looking at them as though something is wrong with them so that's when we actually advise uh, thyroidectomy or uh, you know to remove the thyroid gland uh, we are interested to know whether this goiter has a propensity to develop into malignancy so then what we need what we usually do is we do a what we call an ultrasound of the neck uh, to see if this particular goiter is nodular or whether there are bumps in that thyroid gland if there are small bumps or balls in in the gland then what we do is we do what is called a fine needle aspiration cytology it is nothing but just passing a thin needle into the um, thyroid gland and then looking at the tissue under a microscope that the pathologist do it and then based on this we uh, can in some degree of certainty say whether there is a chance of this particular gland becoming cancerous or not um, and if there is a likelihood, if we see some telltale signs of malignancy, then we advise the person to get the thyroids out or to get a thyroidectomy done. So uh, that is uh, what we do uh, with um, a goiter that can look a little bit suspicious on the fine needle aspiration cytology. But it's a, the fine needle aspiration cytology, if you ask me, is such a simple yet such an effective tool because earlier, uh, we had no way of knowing um, 
other than to do a complete thyroidectomy which is like such a, a large procedure uh, to know whether this particular gland or whether this particular person can have thyroid malignancy or not whereas now we can almost with certainty just by doing a simple fine needle aspiration cytology we can say uh, uh, one from the other um, so that uh, is with regards to uh, the goiter The treatment part is, it depends on, um, you know, whether this person is terribly worried about uh, or cosmetically, um, you know, they are not happy. So then what we ask them to do is if, um, if it is really affecting their life or um, if it is affecting um, their, you know, uh, quality of life as, as we call it, then we um, discuss thyroidectomy with them. Um, but not before uh, trying um, uh, what, what I told you earlier, a little bit of thyroxin hormone to see if uh, the gland can uh, shrink just by doing that alone. In a small percentage we may achieve that, but uh, a great majority may have to get uh, their thyroids removed when it becomes too uh, large for their comfort. Now this is a common question that, uh, that uh, people uh, you know pose to us um, and uh, usually we tell them that foods have no association with goiters uh, but uh, that's not entirely true because if you come from a iron deficient area uh, like in India we know for a fact that uh, Himalayan uh, region Rajasthan and some of those parts can be iron deficient uh, so in those parts if uh, you uh, eat cauliflower or broccoli or uh, vegetables that belong to that class of um, or that group of vegetables then you can actually um, uh, you know uh, uh, try and invite uh, or incite a goiter uh, so that's why we say these uh, group of vegetables should be avoided only in those areas but for, for, for those of us uh, living in iron sufficient areas, for example, south of India, even you know better or more parts of North India, even is uh, we, we know for, for with, with certainty that there is enough iron. So if that is the case, then um, that there is um, nothing lost, or uh, you know uh, these patients can be easily advised to have all these foods. Uh, or have no um, restrictions to uh, the foods that, that, they, that they can eat. Uh, the risk factors um, for a goiter are mainly A, that is if uh, it is much more commonly seen in women. So if you belong to the female sex, you tend to uh, be more predisposed to having a goiter. Then there is this entity called pubertal goiter. That is, girls going through that pubertal period, um, uh, a small minority of them are uh, shown to have their uh, glands enlarging during that time. And after that, after their, after the puberty is over, uh, uh, you know, some of them the goiters regress, but some of them continue to have this uh, swelling or lump in the throat. Uh, now uh, that is. You know, if you ask me, uh, this pubertal goiter by itself is probably not uh, something normal. So if you find that a girl going through puberty has a lump in the throat, definitely you must get uh, the thyroid functions tested so that if we pick up a hypothyroid state, they can be treated adequately and, um, you know, they will not run the risk of, um, you know, the complications or the adverse effects of hypothyroidism in um, their latter part of their life. So um, that is uh, one of the causes of uh, this one. Um, it is said that viral infections like measles, mums um, and a whole lot of other viruses can predispose to hypothyroidism. But uh, it's, uh, it's not something that is of any use in knowing um, uh, from the public uh, perception point of view. The reason being, uh, you know, nobody can stop uh, these viral uh, infections and uh, viral infections are all around us. So if you are uh, predestined to develop uh, hypothyroidism, there's nothing that we can stop um, or uh, nothing that we can do to stop it from uh, manifesting. Now, the most important cause of hypothyroidism is what we uh, call as a genetic 
predisposition because if you are born with those genes which predispose you to developing hypothyroidism then there's nothing that any one of us can do to stop it from manifesting so if you were to look at the causes one is genetic predisposition is the most common cause for hypothyroidism uh, then that extends or in the same uh, scene uh, female sex why uh, i mean um, females uh, females are more prone to hypothyroidism mainly because they are they, they are more genetically prone to develop hypothyroidism so it's basically the same then um, you have a pubertal goiter which can be seen in women going through their pubertal period um, yeah so these are uh, roughly the causes for hypothyroidism